two equations to solve here. I'm going to write the first equation with square root around the whole thing. I think that makes it a little bit clearer. Now, this is not always something people do, or like even I do, but it is worth just thinking about this possible subset of solutions. We can see from here that we have to have x is bigger or equal to minus 1. If we had minus 2, then that's not going to be um, allowed. And over here, x will have to be bigger or equal to minus 16 over 3. If we were to just sketch these on a number line, say minus 1, then we would get this going on. And then minus 16 over 3 would be over here, because it's smaller. And maybe this uh, it would look like that. And I'm interested in where both of these things are OK. And so actually, my overall solutions are going to be here. I need to have the x is bigger or equal to minus 1. Now, the reason I talk about this is when you start dealing with square root equations and you start squaring, sometimes you can end up with solutions where you, know, you might get minus 2, for example. It might be a solution to the new equation that you formed, but it won't be a solution to this equation. The same is very much true of logs. So I'm just writing this here, and it's, it's something to be aware of that I recommend. Right, what can I do here? I've got square roots. What I'm going to do is I'm going to square both sides. That's how you can uh, solve this equation. So 3x plus 16, okay, I can just square that straight away, is going to equal 3 plus the square root of x plus 1 times 3 plus the square root of x plus 1. This one's a bit more awkward, let's be honest. But I'm going to get 9. I'm going, to, I'm going to multiply these two terms. It's going to give me x plus 1. And then I'm going to get three lots of x plus 1 square rooted and another three lots. It's going to be six lots of x plus 1 square rooted. Haven't managed to get rid of the square roots overall. Still one there. So just tidy this up. 3x plus 16 is going to equal x plus 10 plus 6 x plus 1 square rooted. Now, I don't, what I definitely don't want to do is then square this again. You know, I do somehow need to get rid of this, but the way to do it is to first of all get this onto the other side. So I can minus x, I'm going to have 2x, I can minus 10, I'm going to have 6, and that's going to equal 6 lots of x plus 1. This is much better because now I can square the right-hand side, it's not going to be any crossover terms. Before I do that, however, there is a common factor of 2. It's worth this is an equation just of dividing through by 2 to make life a little bit easier. And now I'm going to square again. So I'm going to get x plus 3 all squared. That will be x squared plus 6x plus 9. And then when I square the right hand side, I will square the 3 and I will square the x plus 1. And we've turned this into a quadratic, which is really good. So um, this is going to be 9x plus 9, which is even better because I'm going to get x squared minus 3x is equal to 0. That's what this equation has become. Factorize out the x. So x is equal to 0 or 3. Now we just need to compare that with our little um, condition we had up here. It's got to be greater or equal to minus 1. In this case, there are no extra solutions, but sometimes you get them. You know, you, I could design a question and you will see in similar papers, sometimes you get something called spurious solutions. So um, you either need to have this little condition that you're aware of at the start, or you just substitute these back in and check that it works. When I put zero in, I'm gonna get root 16, which is four, is equal to three plus root one, which is also 3 plus 1 or 4 overall. And if I put in 3, I'm going to get 9 plus 16, 25 square rooted is 5. And then 3 plus the square root of uh, 4, which is 2, is also 5. So I can be really sure that both of those are solutions. That, if you have the time, that is also another nice check. I'm just going to finally um, emphasize this and say both solutions are valid. Right, that was part A. Now we've got a log equation to look at.
Right, what I want to do here basically is um, bring bring the logs all together. So I can write down log to base 3 of x minus 7 minus log to base 3 of x to the half, which is the square root of x. Then I'm going to plus log to base 3 of 2, and that is equal to 1. And I've done that because now I can use the rules of logs and bring this into a single log. So log to base 3, I'm going to times these two together, 2 times x minus 7, because I'm, I'm just using log AB is equal to log A plus log B. And then with the minus, I've got log A over B is equal to log A minus log B. So basically, I need to divide by the square root. So that's where we are at the moment. I can now undo the logs. I'm just going to get rid of these rules that I've written to make a bit more space. So it must be that 2x minus 7 root x is equal to 3. You can either do that just by understanding your logs. Remember, it's 3 to the power of 1 is equal to the thing that we're finding the log of, which is exactly what I've written here. I've just not written the 1 in because 3 to the power of 1 is 3. Or you can raise both sides to the power of 3. It will cancel here and you'll again be left with the same thing. So next up, multiply 3 by that square root, and I'm going to multiply the brackets out at the same time. So 2x minus 14 is equal to 3 root x. And this time, well, okay, so I before I squared, what, what did I do? Where was I? I, um, I squared this because I had an x plus 1 inside the square root and an x here. So I couldn't sort of solve for x plus 1. But in this case, I wouldn't square it. In fact, we have a hidden quadratic. It's a hidden quadratic in terms of root x. So it's up to you how you deal with it. Um, but I'm going to let y equal root x. I'm going to do a little substitution to make it clear. So this means that, uh, oh, by the way, y squared will then be x. So this implies that 2y squared minus 3y is equal to 14. So 2y squared minus 3y minus 14 is equal to 0. There are no common factors, so we just have to, um, you know, get, we have to fact, try and factorize this. Okay, if it factorizes, then it's got to be 2y and y. And then we've just got to try some numbers out. The only possibilities are 1 and 14, which seems so 14, I don't think, is going to work because this number is relatively low, or 2 and 7. If I put a 7 on the right-hand side, then I'll get, again, I'll get something quite large. So I think it might be 7 here and 2 here. We can check it. We're going to get 4y. We're going to get 7y. So... If I want minus 3y, I need this to be minus and this to be plus, minus, plus. And we factorized it. Therefore, y is equal to 7 over 2 or minus 2. Now, don't forget that um, the y was root x. So root x is equal to 7 over 2 or minus 2. We're going to reject this one because you can't square root. This is the positive square root. And therefore, x, we're going to square 7 over 2 to give 49 over 4. Okay, hope you're happy with that. We've gone from the log equation. Now, I don't know why I did it the first time, but I didn't do it here. We had to have the x is going to be... Um, bigger or equal to 7 in this question so that the left hand side is um, the, the thing inside the log is positive so I, I kind of forgot about that that was going to be the restriction 
And so we just need to check actually that this is a valid solution that is, because this is much bigger than seven. So this is valid. Just want to take a little look actually, up to you if you carry on watching, what would happen if I, if I didn't realize it was a hidden quadratic and I squared it? Of course, you expect to get the same solutions. It's just whether we would get some more as well. So I, I could square both sides here. So this is kind of method two or bonus method. 4x squared, you're going to get minus 28x twice. So that's going to be 50, minus 56x plus 14 times 14, which is 196 is equal to 9x. 4x squared minus 65x plus 196 is equal to 0. Um, definitely not a fan of this because this does not look very easy to factorize. Um, do you know what? I don't even really want to do it. I'm gonna gonna at this point just put this into my calculator in fact. I know it's I know it's a non-calculator question, but uh just this is just to see if it works. So 65 plus or minus 65 squared minus 4 times 4 times 196 all over 2a which is 8. So I get as a solution 49 over 4. If I plus, if I do minus b plus and if I do minus then I get 4. Now I would have to reject this one. Um, that's going to be quite hard to factorize. You would have used so this would have factorized to give 4x and x, and then it must be minus 4 and minus 49. Okay, so that would have worked. Um, not particularly nice, it's got to be said, but you could have got there. Use the quadratic formula, it's going to be horrendous when you're squaring things like 65. So the moral of the story really is like when you can look for hidden quadratics, it's going to be simpler, but this would have in theory have worked okay you just would have had to have rejected this um, spurious solution of x equals four which we which we obtain um, you can see basically if you put four back in you get eight minus 14 you get minus six over here and over here you get six so minus six equals six which clearly is not true but when we square it we that's when the two solutions will work because if you square minus six you get 36 if you square six you also get 36 so this process here brings about a spurious solution in this case it doesn't always like i said before it didn't up here but sometimes it will